Welcome to our online worship for the second Sunday of Easter. Um, as ever, you can download the service order from the website just below this video. Uh, and there are some activities for the children at the back of that downloadable uh, service order. And I'll say a little bit more about that later on. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's join now with Keith in singing our first hymn of praise. To God be the glory. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. 
we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. A collect for the second Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, for whom no door is locked, no entrance barred, open the doors of our hearts, that we may seek the good of others, and walk the joyful road of sacrifice and peace, to the praise of God the Father. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 14. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Verses 22 to 32. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said to him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with the joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God had raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my fingers where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here, 
See my hands. Reach out your hands and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And now, children, your challenge is at the back of the service order, so uh, print it. I hope you've printed it off from the uh, service order there. Uh, can you make Jesus rising from the tomb? Uh, and then there's a word search to discover uh, Jesus' message and gift. And again, if you'd like to send me a photograph of what you've made, uh, then we'll put it on the website uh, for next Sunday's service. And now we're going to sing again with Keith as we gather in our different places to worship our hymn, Jesus, Stand Among Us. It is Easter time and we celebrate the new life that Jesus' resurrection offers. As we consider once again the stories of the first witnesses to the resurrection, we reflect on the difference meeting the risen Lord Jesus made to their lives. And we can ask ourselves, what impact does knowing Jesus is alive have on my life? Last week we heard about the first visitors to the tomb, Mary Magdalene, Peter and John. The men saw the stone rolled away and the empty tomb, and a kind of belief, hope, glimmered in the darkness. But they did not understand, and so they went back home. Mary stayed at the tomb, but still in profound despair, until she met, saw, conversed with the risen Jesus. That despairing woman became the first witness of the resurrection, the first to tell the good news, I have seen the Lord. Lives change when people meet the risen Jesus. What of the gathered disciples that first day of the week of whom we heard in our gospel reading? They had travelled with Jesus for three years. They had seen the great signs pointing to who Jesus was and why he had come. They had seen Jesus turning water into wine, feeding the 5,000, walking on water, healing the sick, raising Lazarus to life. But they did not understand how Jesus' very life and actions revealed just who he was. They had all failed him. They had abandoned him in the garden when he was arrested. Peter had plucked up the courage to follow but then had denied Jesus even as he stood trial. The disciples did not understand how Jesus' very death was why he had come. How could they understand his resurrection? 
So now they gathered together in fear, behind locked doors, isolated, shut off from the world. And then he came, that very first day, resurrection day, Jesus came and stood among them. And then they met the risen Jesus too, and they heard his words, peace be with you. It was a usual greeting, shalom, peace, well-being in God's place under God's rule. But now it took on a whole new meaning. Jesus said again, peace be with you. It is as though these first words to the fearful disciples from the risen Lord, shalom, peace, kingdom, well-being, complemented the last words they had heard three days before. It is finished. For now it is finished. And peace, reconciliation with God, has been won once for all by Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. This is why he came. So when they saw the Lord, when they met the risen Jesus, the fearful disciples became the joyful disciples and the blessed disciples who would be empowered, transformed by the Holy Spirit to be the sent disciples. Lives change when people meet the risen Jesus and receive his gift, his peace and the power of the Holy Spirit. And it was the same for Thomas. He was possibly a twin. That's what his name means. He too was one of the twelve who had been with Jesus through his three-year mission. Thomas gets such a bad press, the one who doubted. But he was brave. When Jesus turned south that last time towards Jerusalem, it was Thomas who had said to the other disciples, Let us go also, that we may die with him. Thomas wants clarity. At the Last Supper, when Jesus told his disciples he was going to prepare a place for them, Thomas was the one who said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Voicing the doubts the others had for sure, for they still did not grasp who Jesus was or why he had come. Jesus had given them so many signs. Thomas wanted one more, and in his grace, Jesus granted it. Jesus showed himself to Thomas and showed him his crucifixion wounds, just as he had shown his wounds to the other disciples the evening of Resurrection Day. Jesus removed from Thomas all possible grounds for unbelief. And with such clear signs, such evidence at last before him, Thomas responded, my Lord and my God. At last, this is who Jesus is. Lives change when people meet the risen Jesus. Later, people met Jesus who hadn't seen him in person. People like us who meet him in his word and through his spirit and in his family, his church. And Jesus said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And we begin to see that blessing so very soon. The early church in Acts, the believers together, lives changed, bold witnesses, declaring the good news of the risen Jesus. And thousands who had never seen Jesus joined them. That's us too, if we will have it. We cannot touch his wounds. But we have been given so much to build up faith, even as faith was established in those first disciples who saw the risen Lord. We stand on the shoulders of giants, the witness of those who saw and told, the witness of lives changed through countless generations by meeting Jesus. Above all, the witness of the word of God and the greatest sign of all, Jesus' death and resurrection to defeat sin and death once for all. Jesus did many other miraculous signs, John writes for us, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Such a simple message. Believe in Jesus, the Son of God, 
be forgiven by Jesus, have life in his name, now and forever. That is what we are called to believe, and that is the message that in Jesus' name we are to call others to hear, that they too may believe. I wonder if the church is still finding its public voice in these our times. It does not seem to be often that the media is asking the church or any faith leaders to speak into the fear and sadness of COVID-19. We have always had a message of hope to share, a confidence that evil doesn't win, God does, a confidence that even in the darkest times, God is with us, God who knows what darkness feels like, God who, even in turmoil, gives peace beyond understanding. We have a confidence that Jesus has defeated even death, a confidence that Jesus offers life to all who believe. This Easter, how does knowing Jesus is alive change your life and offer you hope each and every day? For those who despair, so did Mary. For those who were troubled by past failure, so was Peter. For those who were burdened by loss and fear, so were the disciples. For those who have doubts, so did Thomas. In the sadness, loss, fear, doubt of these days, may we find our voice of hope. Knowing that Jesus is alive turns lives around, including your life and mine, and the lives of those with whom we share the good news. Amen. And now we declare our faith together. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received And this we believe. Amen. And now Dave Allen is going to lead us in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for our faith. We thank you for your gift of the Holy Spirit and for our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray as the family of Christ, as one body receiving your love. Bind us together, Lord. Heavenly Father, we praise you that in these testing times we have your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus gives us our faith. Jesus gives us hope. Jesus gives us peace. Jesus gives us joy. Loving Father, our lives are fulfilled in our love and our faith in Jesus. We are stronger together as the family of God, bound by our faith that gives us the true meaning of life and the belief in life with you after death. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for the many thousands of people working tirelessly, treating those with coronavirus and saving lives. We pray for the doctors and nurses and all the medical staff. We pray for the cleaners and the porters working in the hospitals, keeping everybody safe for the administration staff and all those keeping our NHS working so wonderfully well. We pray, Lord, for those who have lost their lives, their families and their friends. We pray for all the medical staff 
that are being affected by the losses and for the joy at seeing patients come through this most dreadful virus. Loving Father, we pray for the whole world as everybody works to contain and stop the coronavirus. Our prayers are for everybody. Father, we pray for our government and the governments of the world that they will find and do all that is necessary to ease the world back to normality, to work to overcome the economic uncertainty that will face us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our Bart churches and for our church families. We pray for our village communities, for the Bart community support team of volunteers and coordinators working to help others through this crisis. We pray for Linda and the ministry team working together to bring us our weekly service. Although we are not able to worship within our church buildings, we praise and thank you, Lord, that we can come together online to be with one another and to share in your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for all those needing your love and healing hands at this time, for the sad and lonely, for the homeless, for those suffering from depression. We pray for all in bereavement and not able to come together with all family and friends. We pray that the love of Jesus will bring them together and written messages and phone calls will help to strengthen them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The world needs the love of Jesus. His birth gave so much hope to so many people. Today he lives in us all as we do your work, Lord. You are the source of all things and life lives in you. We praise you for sending us Jesus. Jesus is our saviour, our rock and strength. He showed us that we would find your love through him. Jesus is like a living stone, a cornerstone. Let us become living stones of the Christian church and build it strong through the love of Jesus. Amen. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your dear Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Oh, 
would seek the wanderers to bring them back. They know not how or when, but this I know that he was born of Mary when Bethlehem's manger was his holy home, and that he lived at Nazareth and labored, and so the Savior, Savior of the world is come. I cannot tell how silently he suffered, as with his peace he graced this place of tears, or how his heart upon the cross was broken, the crown of pain to three and thirty years. But this I know, he heals the broken hearted, and stays a sin, and comes a looking and lifts the burden from the heavy laden, for yet the Saviour, Saviour of the world is here. I cannot tell how all the land shall worship when at his Every storm is stilled, for who can say how great the jubilation when all the hearts of men with love are filled? But this I know, the skies will thrill with rapture. And myriad, myriad human voices sing, and earth to heaven, and heaven to earth will answer. At last, the Saviour, Saviour of the And now may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and with those you love, now and always. Amen. Live in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.